First of all, I think it's important to understand that HTML5 goes way beyond video. So, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a web, it's a standard that, um, you know, one of its new features is the support for um, the video tag. But it has many more um, enhancements and advancements. Um, and I guess in the context of a video, since we're a video platform, we focus on the advantages that it offers um, for web developers that want to, you know, write once and publish everywhere. Um, the main challenge with, with um, you know, video in general is that, you know, Flash used to be supported um, across, you know, 99% of the PCs. Um, along came the I operating systems, which do not support Flash. Um, and as such, um, you know, HTML5 became uh, one type of a solution for supporting video um, on those devices. Um, the main challenge, and, you know, for us as a video platform, is to really allow publishers to make their content available across devices and across browsers you know, with a consistent user interface, with a consistent graphical interface, um, and that's the main challenge. You know, and that's why you know, we've been working with companies such as Adobe and Microsoft to support both Flash, HTML5, Silverlight, you know, so that publishers can really make their content available anywhere, everywhere, in whatever format. HTML5, is, it, it's not done yet. The standards aren't done. Are there issues out there about standardization and interoperability? So I, I think you know, there's, a, there's a target date for May um, 2011 to complete this. Um, main issue right now is you know, support for HTML5 in browsers. Um, you know, so um, it's not yet supported in Internet Explorer. will be supported in IE9. Um, it's supported in, um, you know, Safari, in uh, uh, Firefox, um, and in Chrome. But, you know, it's, it's not supported in earlier versions. Um, and then, you know, it's again a challenge. Uh, and specifically with video, there's also an additional challenge, which is, you know, what are the codecs um, that are supported by the browsers? So different browsers support different codecs. So then there's another challenge of, you know, what do you transcode your video into so they can play actually across browsers, um, you know, and there will be actually support for encoding those, decoding those videos. What Adobe had announced last week is that they've um, released a new um, HTML5 video uh, widget as part of their widget library. And what it basically allows, it allows to um, publish video, um, you know, to write the code once and to have it published across all browsers um, and all devices, um, offering a fallback um, to Flash where HTML5 um, is not supported. Um, and this is something that is, you know, in the end, that's the holy grail for de web developers. You want to write once and publish across um, all devices and browsers. Um, so I mean, that's the main advantage that it offers, you know, with a consistent UI, a consistent graphical interface. Um, and this is a widget that is actually, you know, useful uh, detached from Kaltura. So it's an open source widget uh, and it's available through their widget library. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to use as part of their Dreamweaver software, but you can use it um, and edit it using any HTML um, editor, um, not only Dreamweaver. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's going to be a very valuable tool for um, web developers. What we did is to um, release a subset of our HTML5 library um, under a different open source license. So originally it was under a GPL license. Um, and what we did was, um, GPL, you know, is, is somewhat restrictive. Um, it forces people who modify or distribute derivative work uh, to contribute that work back. Um, and as part of, um, you know, supporting this effort of Adobe, uh, we'd agreed to release um, this code under a less restrictive open source license. Um, if I recall, it's the MIT license that this is released under, which basically um, allows to make any use of it as long as you um, attribute it back um, to Kaltura. But otherwise, there are no other restrictions. So it's basically the most permissive um, open source license. And I'd say that it is probably the most supportive of uh, future innovation around this widget library, which is what we're interested in, um, among other things. You know, everybody should realize that Flash is still um, out there. Um, and there's a huge developer community around it and many tools that have been developed around Flash. So you know, it's, it's here to stay for quite a while. But you know, in the transition, to the extent HTML5 you know, will become the standard that we were expecting it to become into, uh, you know, all of these, um, I'd say, transitional tools that really allow um, the support both for HTML5, but then build on the fact that, um, you know, Flash is still um, really widespread. I think this is very valuable, and I think it's a smart move um, on, on you know, behalf of Adobe. 
because you know they just can gain from you know HTML5 and you know there's a big community using their Dreamweaver tools and web development tools, so there's nothing really to lose for them. And I don't think there's actually a war between um, Adobe and HTML5.